Since its 2017 release, Hollow Knight has easily become one of the most popular indie games, with dozens of 10 out of 10 reviews and an overwhelmingly positive reception on Steam, pretty much all of which praising the game's incredible open world and the absolute size of the game. However, there is a small group of players thinking slightly differently, a group of players looking to see how quickly this game could be beaten and how far these limits could be pushed. While a normal completion could take upwards of 50 hours, these players were able to finish the game in a fraction of this time, with the use of skips, exploits, and all sorts of other game-breaking techniques. If you've never played Hollow Knight, you play as a knight on a quest to seal away the infection and defeat the final boss of the game, tasked with making your way through each and every crevice of the game's map and exploring the game's narrative. Obviously in the speedrun though, this isn't ideal, and instead, runners opt to avoid almost all of this content. Over the years, this time has been brought down constantly, with players grinding for the fastest possible time, which has led to an incredible world record by a runner known as Lep, who near the end of the year was able to beat the game in 32 minutes, easily the most impressive accomplishment so far and a groundbreaking accomplishment in speedrunning history. So today, I'm going to try and break down exactly how we did it. From the ridiculous skips to the handcrafted route, as well as why this run is so significant. Now from the very first seconds of this run, Lep already begins sprinting through the first few rooms as fast as possible, navigating his way across each platform and jumping up the ledges. And almost immediately, he can make use of the first major skip of the run, pogoing. In Hollow Knight, you can use your nail to pogo off pretty much any object, from spikes to enemies to pretty much anything else. And here, Lep performs a pogo of a venge fly to reach the ledge early, skipping a short platforming challenge. Next, he continues to make his way forward one step at a time, making sure to time each swing to perfection until he finally finishes this area in only 51 seconds, an incredibly impressive achievement even for him. Shortly after this, he's headed into the Forgotten Crossroads, a cavern centered just under the surface of the game. At this point early in the run, what he's trying to do is gather up all the important items he needs to finish the game, and the first of these is locked in the middle of the crossroads. On the way to this item, he gets locked in an arena with a few enemies, which to defeat, he can use this relatively precise spike direct to kill two birds with one stone. Next, he continues his way through the following rooms, jumping over these enemies to make his way forward, up until he reaches the boss arena, where he runs into the false knight, the first boss of the game. Overall, there aren't really any special tricks for this boss, so he mostly focuses on landing consistent well-timed hits. This boss's AI is incredibly predictable, so Lep can ensure he never misses a single swing. However, halfway through the fight, a crack in the wall begins to open, so he can head straight out towards the exit early. And finally, he can pick up his first spell of the game, the Vengeful Spirit, a fireball projectile you can shoot wherever you like to damage enemies, which with the help of something I'll get to later, is easily one of the most powerful weapons in the game. Now, he's on to his second quest, which is to grab the dash from Greenpath, and to make his way there, he needs to climb all the way back up the Forgotten Crossroads, where pretty early in, he can pull off a skip to make it just across this unjumpable gap. This works by timing a Vengeful Spirit cast at the perfect timing during his jump, to just push him far enough to reach the other side. In this situation, it only ends up saving him a few seconds, but this is only the beginning of its use cases, as after running through the next few rooms, he can do the exact same technique to save a huge amount of time. Normally after reaching this point, you'd have to take a long spiraling path of rooms all the way down and around just to reach where this ledge takes you, and this would take an incredibly long amount of time, but with a slightly more precise throw of his fireball, he could make it just up to this ledge and get way further ahead than he's supposed to be at this point. Now he was up here, he could continue running through the level as usual, knocking enemies out of the way with his nail and making sure to avoid the acid pool at the bottom. This is a relatively easy point of the run, with pretty much no major stress so he's free to calm his nerves over the incredible pace he's managed so far. Already, this has been arguably the greatest early game he's ever achieved, with Lep over 5 seconds ahead of his PB, which is an insanely significant amount of time in a speedrun as competitive as this. Soon though, he'd begin his fight with the Moss Knight, who he promptly killed in around a second, and continued through the upper rooms of Greenpath. Now quickly before he reaches the boss, he heads into this little pit to collect 150 Geo from the rocks and enemy loot, 
For a long time in the speedrun, everyone would always kill the mini boss right before this area, as it was considered to be undoubtedly the fastest way to get Geo early game. But only recently, a player by the name of Jagoat discovered if you map out every movement perfectly in this Geo Rock area, you could save a tiny bit of time over the old route. Now onto Hornet, this boss is normally a big step up from the first, but being a speedrunner, Lep has practiced it down to the T. So through the fight, he's able to take care of her without any problems, using combos of both the nail and his new fireball spell. And finally after defeating her, he receives the dash, one of the most important items in speedrunning, as it not only unlocks a bunch of new areas, but also massively speeds up your traveling speed. After this, because he saved his game earlier in the Forgotten Crossroads, he can now immediately quit to the menu and respawn at the bench. This sort of benching, saving and quitting is super important throughout the run, as the map is huge and he can't waste any time running around. His next goal is now to reach the Mantis Village to grab the Mantis Claw, the game's wall jump ability which is pretty much required to finish the game. To get this, he needs to make his way down to the Fungal Caverns, and because he's memorised each room, he can fall all the way to the bottom of each in a single drop, and he continues this through most of the following rooms, until he reaches the next obstacle. On the way to the Mantis Village, he's supposed to take this route all the way around the guards, making his way past each and every Mantis. This however is obviously slower than ideal, and in the speedrun, he performs this skip to reach this ledge early, shortcutting his way in. To do this, he needs to lure a spore down, then bounce off these mushrooms into a spore pogo to just reach the ledge, and then he can jump right into the village. Once he's there, he can grab the claw, and once again, quit right back to the bench. Following this, he performs a few more short tasks, defeating the Grus Mother boss, and buying a new charm which powers up his spells. Now at this point in the game, most players would consider him to be relatively early in, with only a fraction of the game explored. And while this is true to a degree, Lep has a strategy up his sleeve to pretty much break all the progression of the game, and skip a huge portion of gameplay. After exiting the charm shop, he takes a few hits to a couple enemies, and after a few seconds dies. How is this a speedrun strategy? Well, whenever you die in Hollow Knight, you spawn a shade, a ghost of yourself which acts like pretty much any other enemy in the game, and just like any other enemy, you can pogo off of it meaning with the right timing, Lep can pogo right off this shade to reach the ledge up top, and skip a huge amount of content. Normally to reach this area, you'd have to drag yourself through all sorts of areas, boss fights, and item requirements, but with the help of his shade, he can skip absolutely all of this. Now he's in the blue lake, and with the help of a movement glitch, he can fly right across the water jump by jump. The big reason he's gone to this area is to pick up the dream nail, which is pretty much the key to the rest of the game. With this item, he's able to unlock the three major quests of the game. To unlock the final boss, there are three dreamers scattered all across the map. One located at the very top of the City of Tears, one in Fog Canyons close to the middle of the map, and one at the very edge in Deep Nest. Over the course of the run, Lep needs to make his way between these dreamers to kill them, and then finally defeat the final boss, the Hollow Knight. So after entering the dream world, with the use of a few well-timed jumps and dashes, he can weird through every platform to grab the dream nail and return to where he started. The first of these dreamers he'll be going for is the one in the City of Tears. So after taking the elevator down, he begins racing his way through. At this part in the run, he's running a little behind his personal best, so good performance is going to be necessary for these next few areas. After running through a bit of the city, he can pull off this background object pogo to get just enough height to reach this ledge making his way into an area he's meant to enter significantly later. Following this, he does yet another trick with what's known as a lever skip, where he hits the lever through the wall to skip the long winding path you're meant to take. Next, he can continue climbing up the tower dodging past the tower guards. And finally after taking a few elevators up to the top, he's encountered arguably the hardest boss in the game, the Watcher Knights. The Watcher Knights are a team of six beetles that bounce around their arena and are generally fought pretty late in the game. And even at this point, it's an incredibly difficult boss for most players. Lep on the other hand, has nothing but a single spell and charm. After being brought down to his last point of health, he just barely managed the kill, and was now onto the Dreamer. Entering the Dream World, he'd begun taking hits, 
and sure enough, the dreamer had been banished once and for all. Now, he was on to dreamer number two, but before he even went on to this, he'd need one extra item to pull off a skip. You see, the next dreamer was located in the Fog Canyons, and this was guarded by quite a few acid pits, which the only way to bypass was using Isma's Tear, an item which gives you full immunity to acid. However, like many other items in this game, this item took a long time to get, and was really off path from the route. But fortunately, a runner by the name of Magalore had discovered with another item, the Crystal Heart, you could perform a well-timed dash right above the acid instead. This took some time to get, but overall was much faster than Isma's tier. So now, he was on a mission to the Crystal Peaks to grab this item. And the first step of this was collecting Geo to pay off the travel toll. To gather up all this Geo, all he needed to do was sell some artifacts to a nearby store. As over the run, he'd been collecting quite a few of these artifacts so he could cash them out here for a solid payout. So after leaving, he could exit with just over 2300 Geo. Next, he made his way over to the station, hopped on the stag, and headed all the way back up to the surface. And following a few more short tasks, he'd made his way into the Crystal Peaks. To save some time in the start of this area, he could make use of the convey belt momentum to accelerate wherever he needed, and after a few wall jumps, he could perform this infamous pogo off this minus pickaxe to make his way up faster. Despite only saving a second, this trick is easy to mess up, and is one of the biggest run killers in the community, with messing it up costing up to 10 seconds. After this, he can head past these laser guys, just barely dodging their attacks to continue forward. And now, he'd reach the final platforming challenge of Crystal Peaks. At these lasers, he can damage tank the first hit to get through early. But apart from this, every single laser happens to be scheduled at the perfect time for the speedrun, so that you can run through as fast as you can and never even get hit. And finally, he can grab the Crystal Heart and has now unlocked the ability to super dash. Saving and quitting to the menu, he's back to the surface and now on his way to the Fog Canyons to kill the second Dreamer. Almost immediately, he can start using the super dash to his advantage, flying through the game until he reaches this room, where he can pull off the Isma's tear skip and dash right above the acid to enter the canyons. Now, he can drop all the way down this chasm, and dodge past all the jellies to reach the teacher's archive. In here, he has to fight Umu, a large jellyfish who will try and kill you with electricity. However, one of the hardest parts of this boss is that Umu is completely invulnerable for the majority of the fight, and only every 20 seconds or so can you actually attack them. So naturally, speedrunners want to try and defeat this boss in the minimum cycles possible. So to do this, runners like Lep had perfectly mapped out their movement to ensure they killed the boss in the quickest time possible. The dark side of this is that if you mess it up, you can lose your entire run. And this is one of the scariest moments for any speedrunner, but if you do manage to pull it off, you'll be sent forward to the next part of the run. And luckily enough, Lep was able to do this and continue to the second dreamer, which he can easily make quick work of. Now for the final dreamer, he needs to make his way to the very edge of Deep Nest, and there are a few ways of reaching this area. The most popular and intended of these is backtracking all the way to the fungal caverns, taking a few corridors through there, and finally making your way in. However, in the speedrun, there is one alternative. By performing a significantly harder acid skip in this room here, you can enter the Queen's Gardens, which basically shortcuts your way into Deep Nest. Through here, all Lep needs to do is do a couple of crystal dashes, fight off a few mantises, and soon enough, he's in Deep Nest almost 30 seconds ahead of the intended route. Now he's in here, he can navigate through the tunnels with more and more dashes, along with a couple of wall jumps to weave the perfect route ahead. And soon enough, he's reached a distant village, where after sitting on a bench, he's trapped by the villagers and tied up in this room. Immediately upon gaining control though, he can break right out and sprint his way towards the dreamer as fast as possible. On the way, he can perform a glitch to clip his way through this enemy, climb up the walls, and finally reach the last dreamer, who he kills saving 4 seconds over his last PB. Now, all that was left was to defeat the Hollow Knight, the final boss who was the make or break decider of the run. Leaving Deep Nest, he was only barely able to afford the stag, with a single Geo to spare and was now on his way to the Black Egg Temple. Crystal dashing his way forward, he was now in the temple and ready to fight the final boss of the game. And after finally breaking the fourth chain, the fight had begun. Through all his months of practice, 
he perfected the final fight, performing everything as well as he possibly could. And now, it was down to his final phase. After all this time, he'd finally achieved a flat time of 32 minutes, the new world record, and one of the most impressive times seen so far. This time is far from perfect, and undoubtedly has room to improve, but for the current time, it remains at the top of the leaderboard. If you like this video, all I ask is for you to scroll down and press the subscribe button, as I've got some really interesting videos coming up soon. And as always, have a nice day.